All right, we are gonna jump right in with the quilting. So if that part kind of intimidates you, we're gonna go ahead and get it out of the way. If you are skipping the quilting for your particular jacket, go ahead and move on to the next lesson. Um, but if you wanna stick around, we're gonna have fun with this part um, because this is one area where you can really bring your own design aesthetic into the mix. I've just got plain flannel pieces here followed along the instructions. I've got my lining um, and my exterior wrong sides together. But keep in mind that if you want to add some more customization, you could totally piece these panels and go kind of wild with it and have fun. Um, the next step is that you're actually going to baste around this outer edge and that keeps everything aligned for the quilting process. Quilting is actually something that I don't do a whole lot of, so I have my friend Ginger Sheehy Taddock joining me and she's going to walk us through the process of quilting and talk through some design options so you can really make your jacket your own. Thanks so much for joining me today, Ginger. Oh. Always a pleasure to have you. Um, especially for this part of the process, because you're you're kind of my my quilting expert. <laughs> nice. Well, I don't know how much of an expert. I just love doing it, and I was so excited to hear that you were going to be doing this quilted jacket. Oh yes. You are seeing them everywhere. They yes. are so on trend right now. So you guys are right there with it. Absolutely. So, yeah. So what can I help you with? All right. Well, I have got my um, pieces prepped. This is just one of my front bodice pieces. I've got the exterior wrong sides together with my flannel lining, and I have followed the instructions and based it around the outer edge and yeah I'm not sure what to do next all right no this is a great canvas yes. and it is it's not too far off from doing a quilt mm -hmm. um, and you know first and foremost I think probably one of the most important things you want to look for is your walking foot yep because you want to be one. able to yep this right here and this machine you have actually has a walking right. foot built into it which is great but if not you can go old school and you can uh, use the walking foot and um, what's nice about this is it makes that fabric go in evenly it's pulling from both sides mm -hmm. so it, it really is kind of an essential especially when you get your thicker fabrics this yes. is this is pretty right. thin it's not outrageously so you probably could get away with just a presser foot mm -hmm. but it always helps to have that because then you know for sure that you are going to be getting that nice even pull through the whole entire thing and it's going to stay nice and consistent. Yeah. So I think that's probably different from you know what you might not normally use if right. you're a garment sewer. Right. Um, and then I think the other thing is is maybe just having those design tools with you. Yes. Because designing on your fabric is that's one of the most fun things about quilting yeah. is really being able to kind of add your own personality and there's so many fun ways that you can do that. Absolutely. I think that might be the hardest part is just deciding what I want to do with this blank canvas. Um, but I have my I have a marking tool Perfect. and I've got my big ruler. I will also say that um, some walking feet actually come with a walking bar that helps you keep your lines parallel. Yes, and it is, and that's really great because then you can just literally go, you know, from one line to the next yep. to the next, and it basically just kind of tracks along. You put it back there, and it just follows it right along with it. I so love that. Whoop, you're just kind of doing that. And if you so. don't have that, you can always tape a toothpick to your sewing machine, which is what I've done before. Oh, <laughs> I've yeah. never thought to do that. Yeah. That's brilliant. It's like, it works in All a pinch, right. but yes. Nice, absolutely. giving those bonus tips out. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's talk about design options. I okay. see you've got some samples here, and they are so lovely. Oh, my goodness. Here, here I'll hand you over. the walking yep. foot since you don't need it for your machine. Right. All right. So, oh, my God. This fabric was just wonderful to work so with. Fun. Oh, my goodness. So, I've got two different variations, and I really had some fun, too, with uh, thread because mm, yes. it's another yep. way that you can really bring out your personality Absolutely. within your, your garments and stuff. So, I'm going to start with this one because this, okay. I think, was one of my favorites. I've got two with batting and then two without. So you can kind of see the difference in mm -hmm. what adding that loft really does. So this one I just put, it's a polyester. It's got a little yeah. bit higher of a loft. And oh, then I went yeah. with like kind of a green fat, uh, thread in there to really bring out this other side. Yes, which, yes. look oh my at that. Goodness, it makes it almost like seem like velvet. It does, it has so much texture. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was already super mm -hmm. soft and now I just want to snuggle up with I it. I know, <laughs> exactly. It really does give you that kind of more traditional yeah. Um, yep. You know, I know like on some of the samples, I've seen the wider, you know, kind mm -hmm. of crosshatch, but mm -hmm. I like this kind of tight. I do too. Like Absolutely. it really punches out. And when you add that batting in there, it really makes that loft rise. Yeah, it gives it some um, dimension. And this was, this was like a polyester one. So it did have a little bit of loft in it. And then, like I said, I love that green thread because then you get something like this and you can really see it. Yep. So you have your choices. You can figure Absolutely. out, you know, how you want to utilize that thread. Mm -hmm. And then this one, I actually so did. Fun. It was just a cotton. And yeah. so it's, it's 
the loft really isn't yeah. that different. Yeah, I can, I can see that. But it definitely is a little more tight. I went with the diagonal on this yes. one. This is like my go-to quilt design, oh, I yeah. feel like, because I don't own a long arm, which mm -hmm. that's the big machine that you can feed your quilts through, and I don't have that. So yeah. a lot of times I try to think like, okay, what can I really fit into my machine? Yes. And um, so this is kind of my go-to. I really love doing that. And I did this in like kind of a brown, almost copper colored thread which when you turn it over it disappears yeah it kind of disappears yeah I and i felt like you really don't get the loft like you yeah. get with the other one so i think if i had used the polyester batting with this i think it probably yeah. would have really given me a little bit more punch because it almost just disappears in there um but i love it on that side yep absolutely. so yet again you get so to have some fun lovely and then that batting is also like if you're cold yeah. Add that in with the wool, you're going to be toasty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Um, yes. And then I just did a couple more designs. Yeah, I see these. This is just oh, kind of similar to the crosshatch, but did it on a diagonal. Yep, I love that. And it does. It gives it a completely different feel, mm -hmm. I think. Um, you know, while it's not very different technique-wise, you're getting such a, I don't know, it's a little more dramatic maybe, yeah, I yeah, think, agreed. than like a regular one. So yeah. really fun. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then it just, it kind of disappears on the yeah. back. Yeah, huh? so that brown, so it's so funny when I was picking my thread, I was like, oh, I'd probably pick more of a darker color yeah. thread maybe yeah. if, if you want it to be on that side. Mm -hmm. Or you might just be looking for that, but I love it on the green. Yeah, it looks I think so it nice. really looks good on that. It's really rich. So yeah, on this one, I was like, all right, I want to see some color on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, So you I can went see with those. like a blue, because I wanted to kind of match up the yeah, blue and that. And yeah. this was really simple. This is like, if you're looking, yep. like if you're not, you don't want to be overwhelmed, this is such an easy thing to yep. do. You Absolutely. just literally feed it through your machine. And when you've got that bar, that really helps keep these nice and straight. But I just, you know, went in, I, you can kind of still see the chalk yeah. lines a little yep. in there. And um, yeah, they'll go away eventually. But uh, yeah, so I mean, this was just a nice, simple go-to. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't go too crazy. You can really have some fun and do like maybe some wavy lines. Yeah, some curves would yes. be kind it. it would be yeah so but yeah so hopefully this is a little bit of inspiration totally. for everybody out there to go and just have some fun have some and play fun. with your thread mm -hmm. and all that good stuff and not be intimidated yes i will say so you know as opposed to when you're making a larger quilt these are little pieces that you're mm -hmm. quilting and you're yep. doing them one at a time before you actually begin the construction process so it's a it does make it a little bit more approachable um so let's yeah. let's take a look this is my front bodice piece nice. what do you think we should do oh my goodness an empty canvas i, I know, love it I this know. is like the most fun but it almost gets overwhelming sometimes i know too, so because many there options. are so many possibilities yep. so since this is the bodice i feel like it really does give you like a lot of space that Absolutely. you can work with maybe you could do chevrons what are you feeling? I was thinking maybe something a little bit directional. So I do like yeah. the idea of a chevron. Maybe this will be on the opposite side of the zipper from the other side of the right. front bodice. So it would be cool to kind of work with those yeah. as like a whole. You can do that. Like I said, what's nice is you've got your ruler yep. here. You've got your pencil. Yep. So let's just get started okay. and see what, what okay. you're thinking. Because I think All you right. really could have a lot of fun with that. I'm going to just start. And I think the other thing to remember, too, is... So we'll mark all the lines and then we actually, we start stitching from the inside and then kind of okay. work out to yes. kind of just help distribute that mm -hmm. um, evenly and yeah. keep things all nice and balanced. And I think one other thing we could talk about real quick too, is if you are adding that batting in the middle mm -hmm. there, is just basting it together, which yeah. is nice because you're basting it all the way around yes. here. But you might need a few pins when you're dealing with this because yeah. it does, it definitely gets a little unruly. But what's nice about the flannel is that it's got that kind of nice texture to yes. it. So it's not going to move around it as much. Move it kinda, as much. It's like Vel Velcro, it just sticks. I uh. love that about it. Yeah. So you could do pins. There's basting spray that quilters use. There's, there's all kinds of tools to kind of yeah. help you through this, especially if it's something that you enjoy doing mm -hmm. and you kind of want to get into it. Nice. Because I, I can I can tell you this is already inspiring me. Yay! Making this is kind of making your own fabric. It is. Way. It really is because you can just add so much personality with that. All right. So I've got a couple lines marked just to get us started here, okay. and I am ready to stitch this center line here. That's right. And you want to just make, again, you want to make sure you're starting kind of in the center in the and going that way, so mm -hmm. that way it just kind of keeps it all even. And if you're going this way, you want to kind of start in the middle. You know, start your lines up here, and then just kind of go from there. Got it. Um, yeah. So just want to make sure it stays all nice and even. Absolutely. All right. All right. And I'm going to take it to this machine. Now, tell me about this special okay. system on this machine. It's, it's pretty amazing. It is. And it's not really called like the walking foot. It right. is called the Integrated Dual Feed System, or IDF. So it's so easy. All you do is just take this, hook it underneath, and you hear that little click? Yeah. You're set to go. All right. So that's just going to help everything feed nice yep. and neat, kind of like a walking foot exactly. on another machine that doesn't have this 
yep. system. All the right. The key is that dual feed. You're getting Love it from it. both sides. <laughs> Love it. All right. Let's test it out. Now I am using a darker thread, so the quilting's not gonna show up quite as much, but you'll be able to see it a little bit when I get done here. Oh yeah, that's nice and neat. There's yeah. no puckering or any, mm -hmm. everything's now staying right where it, it should nice be. nice and even, yep. Okay, let's see how I did. Oh yeah, just followed that line yep. right along, and then I'm gonna come in and Work on both of these lines and then just keep working up. And yeah, get this just thing kind of quilted. work your way out. Yeah, so that way you're kind of having it all go in that same direction, going the other way. Got yeah. it. All right. So I have a lot of work to do. I need to get all of my pieces quilted and then we can jump into the next lesson, which is actually where the construction steps start. Yep. So I can't wait to see your finished. I know. This finished is fun. Jacket. Yes. <laughs>